Welcome back to KSP 1.4.3, making history. And uh, yes, uh, we've got the new patch, which means mission creators can now create mobile launch pads in the ocean, as well as a new desert runway or desert airfield in the desert, of course. So we're coming here towards the moon. What are we doing? Well, we're trying to do a ridiculous thing. We're using the same... <laughs> Same vehicle that we used for Minmus before, but this time we're just going to keep hold of this stage and we're going to try and use it to land on. Yes, I know that sounds silly, but then we have an escape vehicle to get out of the moon's gravity. And, uh, you know, this will all count towards a mission that we've got, which is land on the moon with a new surface outpost and transmit and recover scientific data from space around the moon. So I guess we better do that of some kind. Uh, a crew report will you do for me, hopefully? If not, I've probably got some kind of thing on here. Yep, so we've got that. That probably pays for our launch, at least mostly. And now I need to do the whole landing thing. So here we are, coming in for final landing on our engine. <laughs> and uh, we're coming in at 5,000 meters. And I have had to turn off Scatterer and um, Stock Visual Enhancement. So having some problems with the new versions. So we're just going to wait until those new versions are ready. But otherwise, we're just going to use up the last part of our fuel, just getting down to the surface. So I'm just going to slow ourselves down as we come in for the final bit. You can see the ground scatter around all over the place now. So we should be okay-ish. Assuming it's relatively, um, well, flat. And usually I'm unlucky here. I might actually be lucky. We'll see. Uh, let's just bring in our speed. A touch more. We want to be quite slow when we come in for that final touchdown. And hopefully don't tip over. Uh, there's our shadow. So it gives us good indication. And uh, let's just reduce our speed all the way down and make sure we're just pointing straight up and uh, three meters two meters per second and we're down and um, whoop please don't tip please don't tip we're down <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we just have to maintain stability for 10 seconds, which we just did. And now we're on the moon with essentially <laughs> a space station on the moon. And it looks like I found the first bug with 1.4.3, which is uh, sort of good to know, in that uh, now we've done this, it's now got all the, no longer the ticks, but the circles. That happens as soon as you save the game, it seems. So. Hopefully, well, it does still count because we did get our money, but uh, yeah, very odd issue. Let's see if we can EVA and hopefully it won't tip over. Uh, I can't turn on my RCS just yet, so I'm going to let go, turn on my RCS and slow ourselves down. Hopefully the rest of my ship won't tip. Uh, no, good. And uh, now can we do any science out here? We can. We can EVA report. EVA report is worth 20 science and a surface sample that's worth 72 science. We're definitely going to take that. And uh, yeah, I don't think I've got any other biomes relatively nearby. So what we're going to do is I think we're going to head home. And to do that, I have to be a bit careful not to tip our lander over as we come in. But uh, this does get us more science. Oh. <laughs> Better if I go sideways like this. Here we go. And I'm just going to grab on. Let's get close. And board. There we go. So we're on board. And now what we want to do is leave one. Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> well, yeah, we're definitely. Um, we're definitely leaving. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Uh, what I meant to do was separate this. So I want to decouple here. And then turn on our engine. And now, and now we have a an escape vehicle home. Oh dear, that station. Well, we're not coming back for that. That much is for certain. So instead, let's just turn over 45 degrees and head this away. 
with our spark engine. And let's see how that's getting us into orbit. Hopefully it will be. There we go. So we got 8K, 9K. We can just tip ourselves over now. We shouldn't have to be too careful at this point. Uh, what's our fuel situation like? Uh, it looks okay. Takes a little bit more fuel to get into orbit around the moon than it does around something like Minmus. However, you can do the same process that you uh, you do getting up from Kerbin. So you can just watch the time to the apoapsis and then, you know, don't worry about it. Otherwise, just keep that relatively close. In our case, we're going to build fast forward and then get in orbit and hopefully back to Kerbin. And there's a wonderful shot of our <laughs> our station. Oh, and there it goes. Ah, oh, well. And here we've got a burn from orbit back to Kerbin, and we're coming up to that node now. We just want to wait till 15 seconds or so, and then we should be able to go, and uh, hopefully we have enough fuel left. We'll see very shortly. I still don't have Kerbal Engineer installed on this thing, so we're doing it blind as usual. Um, not that that's, it is a good thing, of course. So here we go. We should have enough fuel there. Yeah, we've got enough fuel for about 30 seconds or so, which is all we need. And... There goes our orbital track. It should come around to match this, and then we should see our eventual periapsis get to around 27, 28 kilometers or something along those lines. And in it comes. Just gonna match this. I'm just going to refine that a little bit. And 28.9. It's more than enough, and we got plenty of fuel. All right, so I'll see you back at the base. And here we are, nice and safe back at the base. Jeb is returned to Kerbin safely, and we've got 258 science. We can get ahead on through here. And can we actually buy anything with 258? Mm, we can. Okay, so we can get these fuel systems. I think that was the one I actually wanted. So it's fuel systems, then it was something down here, wasn't it? The advanced electrics and I assume um, I assume this the advanced exploration node just because it, that's pretty great so advanced fuel systems it gives me the jumbo tanks I mean, much appreciated although the thumbnail is the orange tank and this is the new texture uh, we get the connector port that's Kerbal inventory system uh, some RCS fuel tanks and just general fuel, tank, fuel tanks in general so let's just get that um, ordered there we go and now we've got 98 science, so we're going to need more than that to uh, to do our job and uh, get these other nodes unlocked. So let's see what missions we've got next. Come on, missions. Observational surveys of the moon. Eh, plenty of things, but that, that's all above a certain uh, heights, so that's an easy one. Just put it, something into a polar orbit. Um, satellites in various orbits. Rescue. Science data, we need a new orbital station around Minmus. And this one has, <laughs> you have to have 4,000 units of liquid fuel in your station and support nine Kerbals. <laughs> it's making things harder. And uh, Explore the Moon is Dock 2 Vessels. So seeing this mission got me to thinking, you know, do they have to start out as two different vessels or could we send one up there, undock it, then redock it? Might be worth a try, at least. If not, I guess we get to send another astronaut around the moon. So let's just see if we can do that one. And I'm not sure whether we're going to get that done. I suppose we could go polar, but mm, that's not really a, so much of an issue. And science data from Mimbus, no, no. So we don't have anything else for the moon except this. So why don't we go and give it a try? And let's see what we've got to do it with. So... I took our previous station launcher, as it is a two-part vessel anyway, although we don't necessarily need... In fact, we can save some money on this trip. Let's just take... Uh, we can take that off, and we can take this docking port off the bottom, and this. Because it's just two vessels, it doesn't really care much about what those vessels are. And then we can bring this back in, and save a bit of money. So the bottom one is, uh, in fact, what we should probably do is just take that decoupler away for a second and just flip this around. So we want the 
docking port leading to the lander section. And then we've got the unmanned sort of um, probe core below that. So we've got two docking ports there. And we'll have to see whether these are going to be rigid enough. We used to have problems in old versions of KSP where they weren't. They just wobble all over the place unless you put struts in. Uh, so we've got this bottom section, which is a lander can. It's got power, it's got antenna, it's got a probe core to be able to maneuver it in attitude only. There's no there's no, uh, no rockets attached to this one. And we could even put another docking port on the bottom, to be honest, but uh, that's not going to be needed for the moment. It's a couple of docking ports facing each other, and the rest is the same except for this, which is an RCS tank with some RCS thruster blocks. So normally with RCS, what you want to try and do is... Let me just move this out a little bit further. Sort of balance it around the center of mass. And if we turn on center of mass, you'll see it's yeah, the, roughly the right spot. I guess we can get them a bit, a uh, bit lower. There we go. They are too large. I prefer like uh, smaller ones, but I don't think we've got any of those. No, we can place anywhere ports, inline stabilizer, which is just a, a reaction wheel. And that's it. So they will do for now. And then we'll attach this back again. Make sure my staging is still OK. So bottom section, separate the boosters, take over with the Wolfhound, the AG-10 essentially, um, you know, get rid of the fairings, uh, get rid of everything else. And then we're fine. So let's save this and launch. Well, should we have a look at the new the new desert launch site or desert launch site. See what this is like. Sandy, I would imagine. Okay, here we are. So it is very, very sandy, in fact. And we've got a launch, uh, we've got a runway over there if we want one. And yeah. So it's all right. Uh, whereabouts are we on the planet, though? Ooh, interesting. Are we on the are we on the equator? Well, we're close enough, I guess. Uh, where is yeah? So that's the KSC. This is just off the equator, so hmm, we may have to do a bit of a dog leg maneuver. Otherwise, we're fine. So why don't we take off from here? SAS on. Uh, Jeb's going up again. He's. Um, <laughs> He's uh, ready to go. He's uh, just waiting for liftoff. Okay, so he wants us to do an EVA report. No. <laughs> Never do this. Never, ever do this. Okay, so yeah, we, we're taking off. And we're going to do the usual ascent. We just need to probably start thinking about heading over to the east now. And then following it up into orbit. And that should be like normal, so I'm not going to do too much of that on camera. Let's skip forward. And we're up in orbit, approaching our maneuver node. I've cancelled out our inclination relative to the moon so that we don't have any problems with this. And let's just speed ourselves in. So we want 20 seconds or so before going. So 50, 40, 30 and 20 coming up. Let's just get ourselves back on the maneuver node and burn. So this shouldn't take very long at all. We're going to push ourselves out all the way towards the moon, just like we've been on the first part of this uh, episode. And uh, I think I'll see you out there. We shouldn't, uh, there's nothing too special here. And here we are out of the moon. So we can just burn and bring in our orbit. We don't have to do anything specific for a low level orbit or anything. We just want fairly low, that'll do. And uh, we don't have to worry about that. Otherwise, uh, we can bring in the other side of our orbit if we want to. Uh, I guess we're just going to just warp around to there. Be the easiest thing. And that's only just give me the flexibility. I have to bring another vessel up to maneuver with this. So I can get a decent orbit in the inside if I want to catch up. Or a decent orbit on the outside if I want to slow down and uh, get to the station. Or whatever is left up here once we're finished. So here we go. And... We're set to go to retrograde, so that should just spin us around. Here we go. Spinning around. And again, we'll just lower the other side of the orbit so it's, you know, roughly circular. 
That'll do. Don't have to take any specific care there. Okay, so uh, now I guess we get to see whether all this actually works or not. <laughs> it may not do. Uh, do we need to do any special preparations? I think I want to extend that antenna. Uh, do we have any other? No, it's just dock and undock two vessels. So if I right click on here, I don't want to decouple the node. Uh, hmm, I just want to undock. Is that decouple? Well, we'll soon find out. Okay, so now we are separate. And we can fire our engines up. Although, to be honest, uh, what I'm going to do, first of all, is show the Navy Fish's amazing uh, docking alignment indicator. <laughs> this is so much better than looking at the nav ball. So now we want to set this as our target. And then we also want to make sure we fly from here. So uh, control from here. And whoops, <laughs> that will spin us round at the moment because we set it to retrograde. So if we set this back to prograde, it will spin us back again. And let's turn our stability assist on. So you'll see in this sort of viewpoint, we get a whole bunch of different things. The idea is mainly just to get them all centered. So let's turn on the RCS systems. And we use IJ, K and L to go lateral. And then we can just use uh, everything else. So if I just go... Whoops, wrong direction. If I just use H, we should start heading back towards our docking port. Now, I can, if you can see, I can press I and K to move it up and down. J and L to move it left and right. And then I can use my WSAD to, to change the direction of that orange indicator in the middle. We don't have to worry too much about this, though, because we should be close enough that it doesn't matter. And no, nope, doesn't look like we're allowed to do that. <laughs> it would be a heck of a cheat if we could. But that's the idea of docking. And uh, to be honest, this is uh, fine as a space station. So towing it up here is not a complete loss whatsoever. So let's just undock again. And now we can turn on RCS. And whoops, <laughs> I need to control from the, uh, the front again. Uh, control from here. There we go. So H, that one will move away. So now we've got a space station that has a single occupancy, has a docking port and an antenna, and it's up here in orbit around the moon. If we're going to go somewhere else, however, because we're going to have to come back up here eventually and dock with it, so maybe a future lander could come back and dock with it. I don't think there's any specific time. Uh, different vessels. <laughs> yes. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, it was a docking port or a claw, so we could come back with a claw if we wanted to. Um, there's no time indication on this. I guess we'll have to have a look once we're back at uh, the Space Center, whether we've got any time issues. But uh, definitely recommend getting that. The docking port alignment indicator by Navy Fish will help a great deal. Now, you'll see in order to change this lander, we've now got these two twitch engines, which are actually more powerful than the single spark, and uh, means we got more, you know, more instant control while we're up here. So I could do more stuff if we wanted to, but to be honest, um, we can just head around the orbit. Uh, what we can change our orbit, in fact, if we uh, what we don't we don't want to slam into that <laughs> into that. So what we actually probably want to do is just thrust away from this a little bit. We can go forwards. Yeah, we've got plenty of monoprop. And that will mean we'll be bringing in the other side of our orbit. See, there you go. So that uh, we'll be going faster now, which means we'll overtake it as we go past. And then when we come back towards Kerbin, we will just do a maneuver around there, something like that. And we can get our periapsis down to something reasonable. Um, let's get that down to there will do, I guess, or maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, that should be fine. So uh, that's exactly where we're pointing, in fact. So let's just point that in the correct direction. Turn off our RCS and turn off our SAS as well. And let's head to the maneuver. And as you can see, we've overtaken already. It's behind us now. And we're now about to head out and away that way, which will take us towards the planet. So let's just finish that off now. So both of our twin engines uh, are doing just fine. 
Uh, they have more weight to push because of this RCS tank up here. We don't normally need this, of course, on our vessels, but uh, being able to dock with it, at least uh, th this comprises a large service module, so would uh, work quite well, I think. Let's just make sure we're pointed just where we want it as we finish our burn and get ready to head back to Kerbin. I guess we could probably send Val up here, maybe with another station component or something along those lines that we can maneuver into place and then dock. Something along those lines. Uh, let's just make sure we finish that. And three, two, one, and there we go. So let's just see how close we came. 28716. Perfect. All right, SAS off, and we can enjoy the ride home. And for the second part, I'm going to rearrange things a little bit. We already have a probe over there, so we don't need another one. I think. <laughs> we'll soon see. And technically, we don't need the antennas either, so we don't need that one, certainly. And uh, we can get rid of this one as well. So we just call this the 2D. Go. And then uh, where are we going to fly this thing? I think what I'm going to do is put another docking port on the bottom. So if we take this one off for a second, grab you as a copy, that is. Put you back in and then put the docking port. Keep with the docking port. There we go. Back on the bottom. And we're going to be able to fly this in roughly with uh, a valve. Now, the center of gravity is going to be a bit different. So we could just bring this down a shade there. That will be close enough. And we won't need this twitch engine, of course, because we're going to disengage the AJ-10 from the rest of it. And we're going to fly this in and dock this backwards, essentially, to um, to the rest of the station that's already up there. But uh, we're not having Jeb do it. We can't, uh, we can't have Jeb doing that all the time. Um, you know, he'd be getting ahead of Val. So Val's going to fly it. And uh, we, I think, can save a fair bunch of weight by doing so. Uh, I don't... We've lost um, bits and pieces. I don't think I want to take much else off. I suppose we could get rid of some of these solar panels. We can get rid of the landing legs. Not that we will need that, but uh, this is now essentially a convoy or a sort of convoy-like thing. Uh, what we could do... Yeah, what we could do actually is just take this off from here, take this off from here and take this off, put this back. And now we can put our RCS fuel tank here, this back in. And now what's our center of mass? The center of mass is going to be much closer to this. Um, do I want it there? Yeah, it'll do as, as the sort of tug portion of the station. And that will mean we can, you know, just take this away again afterwards. And the station will be left with RCS. So that's an improvement. Uh, station still looks okay, so let's save this as 2D and head up there. And we can probably just edit this down a little bit. Edit, we don't need anywhere near as much. Oh, whoa, oh, is this new? Ah, okay. We're getting uh, curves though when you go outwards. See that? Get an inverse curve sort of thing. That's fine though. Let's just bring this down somewhat, and uh, that will do. I want it in clamshell deploy mode. Sides can be just two, however, not three. Save. And we're going to go for the regular launch pad. See you up there. OK, so here we are in orbit, just outside the orbit of our previous lander. We've got, oh, well, not lander, um, space station. <laughs> so we're now just ahead of them, but we're, we're essentially slower. So it's going to overtake us on the inside. And we've got a maneuver head around about here, which will bring our orbit in to be about the same as this station lander. And we'll have an intersect of 13.7 kilometers, as you can see there. So that works pretty well for me. A uh, tiny amount of a burn, however, so uh, we can forward to, I don't know, around about here. Doesn't have to be exact now because it's just really, <laughs> it's just really, really very little that we actually need to uh, change our orbit. So let's bring that in and let's just set ourselves to prograde when that happens. Sorry, retrograde. There we go. Retrograde it is. 
and estimated burn of zero. So yeah, we just need to point at the right place. And there we go, dead on. So we'll now have an intersection of 13.9. Close enough. Let's get around there, warp to it, and uh, see if we can um, get close enough. So let's bring ourselves around to about here. And I'll see you when we're approaching our target. So here we are approaching our target. We're going to slow down a little bit. And in fact, I want to just go a little bit past so we don't hit it with uh, with this engine module. And we're then going to decouple that thing. Uh, in fact, we can just uh, undock, I guess, decouple node. Yeah, and that's going to head away from us. However, now we should have RCS, so we should be able to uh, just thrust away a little bit. And our target's still approaching, still a kilometer away. But let's bring up Navy Fish's docking alignment indicator. We'll need to get a lot closer to uh, to be able to <laughs> choose the right port there, but uh, that is fine. We do want to control from here. There we go. So we'll be facing the right direction now. So now H should be forwards as far as this is concerned. It is. So we're going to thrust backwards a little bit. And then we can just decide what to do. So I'm going to push our prograde. Uh, oops, even even slight changes with the size of these RCS modules are going to be a little bit annoying. Uh, if we just push forward a little bit, we can just bring our prograde. Uh, that module's in the way. Let's go sideways, shall we? Sideways. Yes, sideways. Good. We're not going to hit that now. That's a good thing. Turn off our RCS and then just get in the right place to do this. And thrust forwards. That should get us right on the target. There we are. So seven meters per second. And then all we need to do is use obviously N to, to go backwards once we get close enough. Here we are, passing sort of like ships in the night, but hopefully not. So we're just going to get it so that we are static, which we are. Turn off our RCS and there goes our engine going past. So we want to make sure we are targeting that. Set us target, we are, good. So now we're gonna to need to flip around and we can do that quite easily. Pointing in the other direction, there are thereabouts. And now we're going to be able to just try and maneuver this thing. So we're going to point in the same direction. Uh, the the nav ball is fairly meaningless at the moment because we're uh, still essentially uh, not moving. So we want to point. Uh, if you have a look at the Navy fishes indicator on the left hand side, we want everything to line up. So we want the orange to line up, which we can the, bring it to here. Whoops, and here. And then we want the two green lines that are coming in to also line up. And we can use our sideways thrust to move that yellow marker. And whichever direction the yellow marker is in, if, i.e. if it's in the bottom right quadrant, the lines are going to move towards it. So all we have to do is make sure that that line is there. And as the, the green lines get closer, we can move the yellow line, the yellow marker back to the center. And then once everything lines up, we should be on line with that docking port. No fuss, no bother. No need to remember how the nav ball works. <laughs> We've just got this as it exists. So let's just bring that in. So in come the lines and we'll just follow the lines in. You can see obviously the vessels themselves, they're looking pretty good. So we just follow or we'll move that, that yellow marker in until everything is done. And then we can also thrust forwards. So that's the retrograde marker now. Whoops. Make sure we are still bringing those lines in. 22 meters from the docking port now. So we want to just bring all of the markers in and then we can just slow ourselves down just with N just while everything comes back together for alignment. So 0.3 meters per second will do. That'll be just a few seconds. Oops, just a few seconds before we get close enough. And now we can use the mouse 
and just see final approach. And I'm just going to turn off RCS for a second just to make sure we're aligned. And we are, roughly. It's going to swing a little bit, but nothing much you can do about that. Whoops, other direction. Once we get really close, uh, that everything becomes uncontrollable. But it doesn't matter, because we should dock. And we have. We can turn off RCS. And we've achieved our mission of basically rendezvousing two craft in orbit around the moon. Now, they're slightly off, off from each other, so what you could do if you're really unhappy about that is just undock again. <laughs> like me, you know, and uh, just rotate just a touch and then turn on RCS and uh, go back straight back in again. Uh, well, you could, and then it decides, no, I'm just not going to dock. Set as the target. <laughs> so let's just do that again, just a little bit uh, care more careful. And let's bring you in. We want to just make sure we're pointing the right direction. The direction will change where the green lines are, of course. So that's something you've got to play around with a little bit. And back in. There we go. So back on target ish. And just got to do those last few seconds. You're going to dock. There we go. RCS off again. And now we're, we're much closer. It's still slightly off, but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to complain about that. And then, of course, we can decouple our regular node. Turn on our engines after making sure the th uh, throttle is down. And now we don't have <laughs> RCS to pull away. We can, however, change back to the station. Uh, is that debris? It is the debris. We don't want the debris. We want the station. The station now has RCS, so it should be able to thrust backwards away from our ship. There it is. And it even has liquid fuel. So if we really wanted to do, we could do a lot with this station. Um, yes, its docking port doesn't have connected living space to, to these, but that doesn't matter too much. Uh, I'm not too concerned. We can all separate it again if we really needed that in the future. So back we are to Val and Val can head home. So hope you enjoyed this episode. We've got maneuvering done in two independent space stations in moon orbit, as well as a lander on the, to an engine on the moon, all in one episode. Go give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Feel free to subscribe, like, share, etc. I'm going to head home with Val. Once again, as always, thanks for watching.